seem to be advanced. Worked perfectly the other day. There must be an unconformity here. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I mean, uh, where's John Briggs? Yeah, we may have to just, uh, <laughs> we'll just, uh, okay, jump to Sorry about this. What, uh, we're going to start looking at, uh, not that we haven't seen some colorful rocks already, but we're going to start looking at the real national park formers here. Um, so, okay, here we are. Uh, the Triassic, interesting origin to this name, um, in the western part of the Alps, uh, around Lake Geneva, um, uh, Switzerland. Uh, they geologists uh, traced uh, a three division or a three part uh, sequence of rocks throughout almost the entire Alps, and hence they called it the, the Triassic. So, uh, in the Colorado Plateau, these are basically the rocks of the, of the famous Painted Desert. Uh, this is in Petrified Forest National Park, the Chinle Formation. Uh, some of the earliest dinosaurs on planet Earth come from the Chinle particularly a little bit east over in New Mexico, in a place called Ghost Ranch, which is probably the largest dinosaur quarry in the world. Um, and then up here, a very beautiful place at uh, Perea, uh, where I happened to do my master's thesis. So the first geology I ever did on the Colorado Plateau was, was here at the, uh, near the old town site of, uh, of Perea. Uh, beautiful exposures of the Chinle Formation. Then I did my doctoral work on the Mohonokopi Formation, here shown in, uh, in Canyonlands National Park. So Triassic rocks tend to be a variety of shades of color, and hence the, the name of the, the Painted Desert. Mainly river deposits uh, across most of the Colorado Plateau. Um, and by this time, here's the supercontinent Pangaea. The Appalachians were still there, but they were certainly being worn down. And if we look very carefully, we see sort of an alignment of lakes right here. And if we think about our modern Earth, where do we see an alignment of lakes like that? We see this in East Africa. And if we look at East Africa, uh, the people that study that part of the world tell us that uh, parts of Somalia and further south in East Africa is rifting away or breaking away from the rest of the continent. And as that happens, these lakes, these linear lakes form, and so we have the African rift, rift system. Well, a similar thing happened in the Triassic of Eastern North America. And uh, it's in this rift system that ultimately the Atlantic Ocean will be born. But hold on, it hasn't happened yet. But again, just to set the stage, North America, uh, Europe, Asia, uh, South America, Africa, and the rest of uh, Gondwana off in the shadows there. So the oldest Triassic uh, deposits in the Colorado Plateau are called the Moenkopi Formation, named after the little town just north of us uh, uh, near Tuba City. Or actually, it's named after the, the wash, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and basically, uh, we still had some marine deposits, particularly up in Utah. They made it just about to the Arizona border uh, and, and withdrew and came back two or three times. Uh, but in our part of the world, all you have to do is walk down Old 66, uh, walk along the sidewalk there, all the red rocks along the, the sidewalk there in the middle part of Flagstaff between East and West Flag are these exposures of the Moenkopi Formation. And that continues up into the, along the Painted Desert into New Mexico and up into the southeastern Utah. So the landscape, uh, primarily rivers coming from the south and flowing into this, uh, this ancient uh, seaway. Um, and actually where they met was a fairly low energy environment. We really don't get any beach sands or anything. It was a, a pretty low energy seaway. The Chile Formation is famous, of course, for petrified wood and early dinosaurs and, and also uh, magnificent river systems that are exposed in the Chile Formation. And I may, I'm, I'm really only exaggerating just slightly when I say and I've studied the Chinle a lot, so I've looked at these river channels. I'm very familiar with them. 
Here's one that goes right through Monument Valley and actually is what holds up the monuments in Monument Valley, are these river channels. Uh, anyway, I've studied these and I, I don't hesitate in saying that the size of at least some of these rivers were almost the, the size of a Brahmaputra or an Orinoco. I mean, are really, really giant river systems um, flowing from southeast to, to northwest across the Colorado Plateau. The early dinosaurs lived along these streams. They, the great conifers, the orcoria, uh, grew in the, uh, along the streams and in the uplands to the south and washed into form, of course, Petrified Forest National Park. The Jurassic Rocks uh, may be the prettiest of them all. Uh, uh, again, really the national park former here in, in Canyonlands. And, and uh, this is one of my favorite little spots that for years I thought I was the only one who knew about this until all the photographers went there. And now it's on every calendar you can buy. The famous horseshoe bend there, just, just right at the Page City limits, literally. And you park right up, right along the highway, you walk a half a mile, and you look 2,000 feet down into the Colorado River. Really spectacular. And here's, this is actually down below this. Uh, uh, so this is what it looks like from the, from the river itself. So if you want to see what Glen Canyon used to look like, uh, that's where you go. So you, it's between Lee's Ferry to the south and, and Page to the north. And then, of course, the greatest, one of the greatest cliffs on planet Earth, the 3,000-foot magnificent cliffs of Zion Canyon, formed in uh, this incredible Navajo sandstone, the great wind-blown Jurassic sandstone. So, uh, and once, uh, okay, William took some, I had more pictures when he took them out. All right, uh, <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> I, I couldn't show, you, you can't fill the Jurassic rocks on just one screen. So anyway, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll live with it. Um, <laughs> where am I? In the early Jurassic, about 205 million years ago. Um, and to, to emphasize what Wayne said, if you're a real geographer nut, you might know what this feature is right here. This is a famous river, a modern river in South Africa called the Ocho... Help me, Wayne. Well, oh, why can't I pronounce that word? Uh, the more I think about it, the more trouble I have. Anyway, it's a great river that flows, actually in Africa it's flowing the opposite direction, but uh, I can do this. I can clone it and turn it around and make it flow the right way here in, in the Jurassic of Utah. Uh, basically, that Okavango River starts in the highlands of, of uh, Central Africa and, and, and it, it makes the mistake of going across the Kalahari Desert. Well, the Kalahari Desert is not uh, very receptive to rivers, and so the river basically loses its water and, and forms this giant inland delta. Well, that's exactly what I think happened in the early Jurassic of the Colorado Plateau. River systems coming from the south entered this extremely arid region and they just sort of lost their water and kind of fanned out here. And meanwhile, winds would blow the sands around and form uh, wind-blown sands to the north. At the same time, we have river systems to the south. And these rocks, by the way, are very well studied and we're, uh, we know exactly where the change between the dunes and the rivers occur across southern Utah and northern Arizona. Uh, then came the, the beginning of the greatest, uh, maybe the greatest Aeolian sand sea in all of geologic history, uh, the Navajo sandstone. Uh, huge wind-blown dunes coming down from the, from the north, uh, covering these rivers of, of Arizona called the Cantiform, or the rivers that formed the Cantiform Formation, again coming up from the south. There must have been an incredible battle, uh, particularly in the Tuba City area. When you drive through the cliffs there at Tuba City, you literally drive through repeated doom river, doom river, and if you look very carefully around Tuba City, you actually see limestone deposits, because what happens when rivers and dunes meet? Dunes like the dam up rivers. And so you form lakes behind the dune dams, and then you get limestones in the lakes. And we see all this right at uh, right up to the city, literally right on the highway. You don't even have to leave the highway. The great dune 